My name is Harry Cooper. I'm a best-selling author. And uh, my 28th book is coming out next week. And I'm the one who discovered that Adolf Hitler did not commit suicide in the bunker. And I published this about 25 years ago. My best-selling book on that came out in 2006. And thank God it's still selling very well. And it's followed on by two other books, Hitler and the Secret Alliance, which explains how it was easy for so many thousands of people from the Third Reich to escape to Argentina. And the next book is Hitler's Spy Web in South America. And it explains how all the, uh, uh, the various spook outfits, German and American, helped hide thousands of people escaping from the Third Reich. I think I was always interested in writing, but it was never a plan to be a, uh, my career. I was in business. I was in administration. I worked my way up to being vice president of a company. And I was also driving Grand National stock cars a long time ago. And I was a features editor for Stock Car Racing Magazine. So I did behind the wheel race reports, which nobody else could do. And then, for reasons that are not important, I sold everything I owned, bought a 30-foot sailing yacht, went to live in the Bahamas, and was writing monthly features for um, motor boating and sailing, for trailer boats, etc. And it just got to be a lot of fun. And when I got to NASA, I met the gentleman who owned the Tribune, and so I was doing news reports through the islands until <clears throat> one time I went to an island that was covered by drug smugglers, and I went on the island, fat, dumb, and happy with the white stuff on my nose and my camera, and I attracted a lot of attention, people with the 45 automatics and M16s, and they told me I pr probably ought to leave. So I did that. And then it just grew from there, and when I was on my boat in the islands, I ran across uh, a, a plantation, uh, a former plantation called Darby Island, and the old caretaker said that they had given fresh water and food to some German U-boats. And that's what planted the hook in me to start studying the U-boats. And now I can say without any shame that there's only one guy in the whole world that knows this topic better than I do, and he's a former U-boat officer and a spy working for both sides. And now I, I I, I'm in my office usually at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I can't see me doing anything else. I'm not making any money at it, but I'm having a lot of fun. My writing space is in a bedroom in my house, which used to be my daughter's, but she moved off uh, after she got her master's degree. She's living in a fairly big city, got a great job. My office looks like an explosion in the public library. There's piles of paper everywhere. I got filing cabinets. I got files stacked all over the floor. And my wife knows she better not ever clean up my office because then I couldn't find anything. It just uh, it looks like the home of a mad professor. Not particularly because I'm pretty much the only guy that does this specific, very narrow focus um, type of writing, history of the German U-boats. And then, of course, we found out that the U-boats were making regular trips down to Argentina all the time, bringing agents, bringing money, valuable goods, bringing equipment. And so that just tumbled over into the escaping uh, people from the Third Reich. Thousands went down there. And so I started, a, my group is called SharkHunters.com, and the sharks are the submarines, and we hunt their history. And as for I did have an ancestor that was fairly successful as, as an author. He wrote 31 books. Some of them you've never heard of. Uh, Tom Coffin, The Wept of the Wish Ton Wish, The Spy, but you've probably also heard of his other book, uh, The Last of the Mohicans. Yeah, we've got his first, first publishing, our first issues that have been passed down from father to son for almost two centuries. My daughter lives for the library. Uh, when she was here in Citrus County, she was always getting phone calls. We got the books in. She's now up in Jack's. She's always getting library calls. But I don't read very much because I'm too busy writing. I don't even watch television. The only time I watch movies is when I'm on an airplane, which I will be on about 24 hours from right now, uh, going to conferences or going overseas. Um, 
in March, I think it is, I'll be down in Argentina again because we found more evidence of the Reich down there. There's no question they were there. No question. It's not a theory. It's fact. My guess for libraries in, in 10 years, um, I think there will be a much stronger focus on electronic retrievals rather than paper uh, books. The, the print media, magazines and newspaper, is pretty much on its way out. I publish a magazine and I used to lug 20-something sacks of mail to the post office every month. Now I have 100 people that get it in hard copy. The rest you just push a button on the computer and bingo, they've got it all. And it's in full color when it comes out on, on, the, com on the computer. So uh, print media just can't keep up with the electronics. If it's your passion, don't let anything stop you. Uh, if it's hard, if it's a chore, if you have to force yourself, then maybe you might want to uh, uh, rethink your priorities. I know uh, it's been said about Hemingway that he forced himself to write 500 words every day, and he was an incredible success. But if I had to force myself to write, I would have to rethink it. I have so much fun, and I've done the research, which makes it easy to produce the book. Um, I don't write novels, because you have to be smart to write novels. <laughs> I do history books, and that means just gathering up all the facts, putting them into a logical order, slugging in photos where you can, and it brings history alive. Uh, as I'm writing about these guys, I've met most of the old U-boat guys before they passed on, and it's like having them sitting at my elbow. <laughs>